this is who I am now. And I'm working on becoming more confident in who I am. And I'm going to work on all these things. And I'm not going to judge myself anymore. That is where you can really step into the power of coaching and making positive changes. So once I was able to set that foundation for myself and really feel like I could do it and get better at it, then you can say, the next thing really becomes like, where am I going in my life? As a resident, as a med student, you don't really think about that beyond I'm going to be an attending. You know, you just think of the one day after residency. That's it. You're like, how can I get to that point? You're never thinking about the majority of your career after that. At least I never did. And so it was recognizing that like, okay, I need to decide what I want here one year from now, five years from now, and then figure out how I can take small steps every day to get there. So it's multidimensional, right? Because we're not one-sided. So it's figuring out for me, what kind of career do I want? What kind of family life? Hey there, my friend. Welcome to the Powerful and Passionate Healthcare Professionals Podcast. I'm your host, Sabrina. I am a cardiothoracic surgery PA with a background in public health and neuroscience. I'm also your peak performance coach. I had to say no to working extreme long hours where I was always on call and feeling exhausted, underappreciated, and undervalued, and said, heck yes, to a life and career that elevates my energy and passion without compromising my health and sanity. Now, I'm on the mission to support ambitious healthcare professional like you with a demanding career to become a confident leader who are living purposefully and fulfilled to truly be both a powerhouse in your career and a passionate person in life. Let's start our journey today. Hello, everyone. This is Sabrina Rombach, your host for the Powerful Passionate Healthcare Professionals podcast. So we're having the awesome Dr. Christine Yates with us, and she is a specialist in OBGYN practice, and she'll be sharing with us about imposter syndrome. So she almost left medicine back in 2016 due to burden of imposter syndrome and perfectionism. Hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of that going around in medicine, right? Or just any high demanding career. And fortunately, she learned about self-coaching and it changed her life. Now she helps high achieving women overcome imposter syndrome and incorporate self-coaching into their lives. She hosts a podcast called Imposter to Unstoppable and has a Facebook group that focuses on self-coaching. And you can check her group out at facebook.com forward slash clarity for women. And Mm -hmm. thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you for having me. This is great. Thank you for what you do. Oh, so I appreciate it. I just love it. Women coming together and really recognizing that we can all step up into the level of self that we appreciate, not just everything around us. Mm -hmm. Gratitude is important, but also give ourselves that empathy and gratitude as well. Thank you so much for talking about this specific topic. And would you mind sharing a little bit the background on what happened back in 2016? And as you have trained so many years, right? Like everyone in medicine, uh, what was the shift? Yeah. So in 2016 is when I graduated from residency and got my first real job as an attending. And it was by, for all intents and purposes, my dream career. It was everything I wanted. I had great partners. The hours were good, especially for OBGYN. And I was finding myself really miserable. I was anxious all the time. I was worried about something going wrong. I felt like, can I really be on my own yet? And it made me feel really stuck in my career. And to the point where I kept thinking like, is this really it? Like, is this all there is? And I had been training, like you said, for you know 15 years or something to become a, an attending physician. And I just felt like, I thought I was going to feel like I made it. And I felt the opposite. I felt like there's no way I can do this career for 40 years. I felt stuck. I felt super worried all the time. I didn't enjoy my job. And it got to the point of burnout where it's like, there's no way this is not sustainable. So I was Googling like how to leave medicine and still afford to pay back your debt and all these different things to figure out like, how could I not do my job anymore? 
At the same time, I was postpartum recovering from the birth of my second daughter and then trying to lose, like going on a weight loss journey. It seems like two separate things, but they converged because through the weight loss journey, I was introduced to coaching, like health and wellness coaching through podcasts. And that helped me with weight loss, but also with everything else, with recognizing what, you know, figuring out what self-coaching is, recognizing the power of my thoughts, which I then was able to recognize that imposter syndrome was just a series of thoughts that made me feel like I wasn't worthy or wasn't valued. And I was able to completely shift my mindset and coach myself essentially out of imposter syndrome to a place where I'm at now, three and a half, four years later, where I love my job. I feel very confident. And it's not that I think that I can never do wrong, but I know that my failures are a way to grow. And The shift was so magnificent in my life that I said, I have to tell other women about this. I have to share the process that I went through because if I can help like one other woman overcome these feelings, then I felt like I've given back and kind of paid it forward. So that's where I'm at now. That's amazing. Thank you so much for sharing that. Definitely, for sure, the sensation of you have worked so many years and got to the point where... Life should be happening now. Like you just finished, you're attending, you have a family, you just have a second birth of your daughter. There's a bunch of new beginnings happening at the same time. However, sometimes we lost that part where I always tap into is all these different key components of life are super interdependent into each other. Mm -hmm. If we're seeing them as separate entities, that's when we start feeling lost because we're tackling one thing at a time and now addressing what's that other piece of that puzzle that we haven't even thought about. Mm -hmm. And for sure, for you, for us to feel good, like that postpartum, that stress, those level, of course, Mm -hmm. if we have that burden, we're not able to have that additional capacity to think about our career success Mm -hmm. or to think about that precious child that you just gave birth to. How are you going to spend even more time when you already have one that need you? And Mm -hmm. plus in relationships, right? Despite how much our significant other can help us, we still have to carry on a lot of weight. And women especially, right, tend to, right, statistics even show that women And men, if in high-level careers, women tend to, two-thirds of us tend to not have children, thinking about that if we are needing to compete, needing to stand Mm up, and able to do it versus men, one out of three are not Mm -hmm. having kids. So how can we really juggle, per se, is able to tap into all these fields and really think about who we are as a person? So this Mm -hmm. is a great topic to dive a little bit deeper into. So what was the journey Once you have discovered that, wow, you know, I can really coach myself out of this. What was the, some of the steps that you took at the time? Yeah. So I think that the most important and fundamental step that I took, which felt really awkward for me was to give myself some grace and realize that not perfect, which I obviously knew that, but also that I had these very unrealistic expectations for myself as a doctor, as a mom, as a wife, as a person living in this world. And the burden because of perfectionism was just unrealistic and it was hurting me. And once I took the pressure off myself and just said like the number one goal before moving forward has to be like, I love myself, I give myself grace and I am a work in progress. And that's the foundation. And I think that in order to make any positive change and get to the next level in your life, you have to start there because any changes that you make from a place of wanting to be better because you don't think you're good enough, those aren't going to be true and positive changes. You need to start with, this is who I am. These are the things I love about myself. These are what I want to work on. And this is really kind of getting comfortable in your authenticity, which I'm not going to lie is, you know, that's a journey. But I think if you're starting from a place of this is who I am now, and I'm working on becoming more confident in who I am, and I'm going to work on all these things, and I'm not going to judge myself anymore. That is where you can really step into the power of coaching and making positive changes. So once I was able to set that foundation for myself and really feel like I could do it and get better at it, then you can say the next thing really becomes like, where am I going in my life? As a resident, as a med student, you don't really think about that beyond I'm going to be an attending. 
You know, you just think of the one day after residency. That's it. You're like, how can I get to that point? You're never thinking about the majority of your career after that. At least I never did. And so it was recognizing that like, okay, I need to decide what I want here one year from now, five years from now, and then figure out how I can take small steps every day to get there. So it's multidimensional, right? Because we're not one-sided. So it's figuring out for me, what kind of career do I want? What kind of family life do I want? What kind of healthy habits are important to me without worrying what other people are expect from me? And as women, that can feel like a huge burden because we think that we need to work so many hours so not we don't disappoint our partners or we need to be the next CMO of the office or be a program director. There's all these goals that we want to achieve and we're so worried about what we should do that we never stop and ask ourselves what we actually want. What are we doing in our lives that we want to do because it's a desire for us? It's about our purpose instead of reacting to other people's wants and desires for us. So it's making that shift and getting comfortable with the discomfort of doing that. And it's a journey. It's not an overnight shift. It's a journey. But when you're able to make those positive changes and really focus on it's okay for me to focus on myself, for me to focus on my goals, and for me to set boundaries and say no, then your life is going to get better and you're going to be better at your job. You're going to be a better mom. You're going to be a better spouse everything will line up when you can put yourself first and realize that it's okay. Yeah, that's so amazing. I always tell my surgical students who come through rotating with me, they ask, right? The most common question is, Sabrina, how do I find that job that I want? And I have to ask exactly what you're saying. Mm -hmm. What is the ideal lifestyle that you want? Because every single job is going to be different. If we continue to chase that job title, that you already fell to start with mm-hmm. because these jobs were getting into attending position, getting to a career, getting to another maybe PhD or a chief of the department. That's just a check marks of a means goal. That's now mm-hmm. an end goal. When we keep chasing these means goal, even as the entrepreneurs that help, they get these big deals and they are so excited, right? Once you earn that PhD, once you get the chief of department, you're so proud proud of yourself. Everyone are proud of you. But how long does that excitement sustain? Not very long. If you think about really just days or weeks, it's not lifetime. So Mm -hmm. when we are able to have that ideal lifestyle, and then we can reverse engineer. And now you have an internal compass to lead you into a direction and not to so easily feeling like women, we have to say yes to doing this favor, going to this committee. Oh, I have to pick up another research publication. No, you don't have to do any of that. You have to know what you actually want. So then all these yeses can lead you to the direction of your life, not Mm -hmm. thinking I have to do X, Y, Z, then I'll be happier because then that will change your course of your life. Right. It's true. And I think that so often we are trying to do something because we think it's going to make us feel proud or make us feel happy when you have to realize that no external circumstance is going to make you happy. Your thoughts make you happy. Your thoughts create your feelings, which is a basic coaching fundamental truth that I didn't know until I was 32 years old. And now that I know that, it's like, okay, if I'm not happy in my job, it's either that I need to change my mind about it, figure out what I can like about it, and then decide if it's the right fit for me. Because if I hate my job, I can get any job I want, I can do anything I want, and I'm going to find a way to hate it because my brain is looking out for those things. You need to look at your life and say, I'm in charge of my happiness and satisfaction right now because of the things I'm thinking. You need to listen to the things that your brain is telling you because most of the time, you're not, it's happening subconsciously. You're not hearing the things that you're thinking. And if you're not paying attention, you don't know to change it. So the first thing you can do is pay attention to what you're thinking, then realize that most of the things are negative for many of us and it's okay. And it's just how we're wired but then you can decide to change your thoughts when you realize that the thoughts that you have are negative, but also probably false. And that is when your whole life can completely shift for the better. Perfect. And all of us, we have these mental chatters and majority mm-hmm. of them are negative, just mm-hmm. like Christine is saying. And studies even show actually as high as 80% are negative. And it's crazy, yeah. but it's just how our brain are wired because mm-hmm. we're 
primitive brain are always scanning for pleasure or danger. And if、mm-hmm. it's something that's not easy to do, we already out of our mind, or something that uncomfortable is already oh, I wanted to avoid that.、Right. But if we have too much avoidance tendency, then you become someone who always bury all your emotions, always bury these problems, and eventually it will pop up somewhere else that you're、yeah. least prepared. And then it becomes something blowing up in your face <laughs> for、mm-hmm. some of us. And when we're talking about like dissatisfaction, burnout, most of the time it's actually these moral dilemma on how we wanted to perform and what we're doing, and not exactly we actually burn out and really wanted to get out of the career. That's、right. why Christine is able to help women to remove that imposter syndrome and fell back in love with their career. And versus、mm-hmm. me is that I know. Despite how much stress you have, I can help you to that next level to really show up as not only your authentic self, but to tap into that genius within you, so、mm-hmm. you can become the peak performer and truly have both. And we, as women, we don't have to choose between a career, our family, or our personal、right. mission. We can have all of them if you're intentional about building this basic building block. To remove these negative thoughts, adding more positivity, and using smaller tools to really pivot yourself into that. And one thing I wanted to suggest, I think Christine probably will agree with me. Whenever we have these negative thoughts, they're coming to us. You can't even prevent them, and that's okay. But at least ask yourself. How valid is that? What's the percentage of that chance that would actually happen to you? If we feel like oh things are too difficult, it's not going to work out, then it becomes this like big cloud on top of your head. Instead of asking specifically, if it really happened, when would it happen? How bad could it be? What would it be something that involved with myself or someone else? If you think more in specific. Details, then probably it's not that bad, right? It's so true. I think that our brains will tell us these crazy thoughts, and then without because we're not used to ever really questioning the thoughts that we have, we're already like six steps ahead of like, oh my gosh, this is going to be a mess, and this is going to happen. I'm going to leave. I'm going to get fired. And if you just get into the habit of listening to the initial thought and really saying, what? Like, hold on. Like, let's just question that. And asking yourself, is it true? And then if the answer is I don't think so, or maybe not, then the next thing that I usually do is I'll say, Can I think of one thing that's to make that not true? Like the thought of with imposter syndrome, I don't belong here. I don't know what I'm doing. Will come up a lot. And then I'll say, Hold on, brain. Is that true? Like, do I really not know what I'm doing? And then I'll realize, you know, okay, so I've done about. Hundreds of hysterectomies, so I do know what I'm doing. And then you offer very logical and tactical with the primitive brain, and bring it to the prefrontal cortex where you're having thoughts that you can think on purpose. And doing that repetitively, offering your your brain more and more evidence to prove that to be true, you won't think the thought anymore, or you'll think it less frequently because your brains just want to be proved right all the time. So if you're offering your brain evidence that's in from your past. Then that's how you can rewire yourself to thinking things that are going to serve you better in your life. That's amazing, and thank you so much for spending the time with us. And this is being a wonderful discussion and topic. And I know definitely there's going to be a lot of women out there who wanted to hear more from you. So how do they find you? Yeah, I'm most active on Instagram and Facebook.、Um, on Instagram, I'm Kristen Yates Do, and on Facebook, you can find me at Kristen Yates Coleman or through my Facebook group where I share a lot of this self coaching info. Wonderful, thank you so much, and I'll definitely have all those in our show notes below, so people can go grab the direct link if you didn't catch it. And for everyone, if you love this episode, we want to hear from you. Give us a review and email us or contact us through social media. And also, I know there's a lot of other people want to hear this message, and you can really help someone by sharing this episode with other ladies out there, because we all know. We have something great inside of us. Let's remove those negativities and let's blossom all together. The more we can compound and support each other, the better we can grow and faster we can get there. So I appreciate everyone. I appreciate Christine for being here with us and have a wonderful day, guys. Thank you. All right, my friend. How did you love this episode? 
Make sure to subscribe to our show so you can continue to build your positive intelligence for that beautiful mind of yours to live powerfully and passionate. I know this just the tip of the iceberg. You probably have a lot more question on actually how do I implement those things into my own life. Well, this is the solution. Joining us inside the private Facebook group. Go to facebook. dot com forward slash groups forward slash powerful passionate where I go live weekly to answer any questions that you have and continue to put more resources for you to help you to get to that point. You can be both powerful and passionate where you no longer working on any mundane work and truly focusing. On the things that matter, you can be both powerful and passionate, or you can overcome any mental roadblocks keeping you from success. You can be both powerful and passionate, or you feel energized from the moment you woke up to the time you go to bed. Join me, and together we can create a life where you can be both powerful and passionate. <laughs>